Welcome back to Open Line, talking about all that's in the news when it comes to um, the presidency, and there's plenty. And we have with us John Vile, MTSU political science professor. Um, calls, let's go back to the phones. Let's go to Denver. Hello, Denver. Yeah, this is Denver. Go right ahead. Well, this is my thought on it, and uh, it comes from, to me from on high. If you're going to, if you're going to unravel the boa constrictor that's wrapped around the United States and the Constitution of it, why not try to first dismantle the, the Fed? that bunch of Rothschild bankers that control our currency and the Ponzi scheme that has become the currency of the United States and has enabled every politician in Washington to enrich himself. From the Bush crime family, the Clinton cobble, and the Bush crime family, by the way, and Obama employed by the Clinton cobble. So you're not a fan of, of government. You're highly skeptical of government. So here's someone. Um, well, and you know, there's a long history of this in the United States. The, the actually the first constitutional issue of substance that that led to the division of political parties in Washington's administration had to do with the constitutionality of a national bank, and a national bank at the time essentially, you know, was was thought to perform some of the functions that the modern Federal Reserve does, um, and. You know, it's we're, we're certainly not unique here. I mean, if you want to talk about a cabal, you know, look look at look at the politicians in Russia. Fig, figure out how much wealth Putin has. Um, he he may have three or four times the amount that Donald Trump does, and I guarantee you, he didn't do it simply on the basis of business deals. Right. So, you right. know, it's it's a perpetual problem throughout the world. And, and, and we hear that more and more. There is this, and I don't know if that we're able to hear it more because there's so many more ways for people to express themselves, whether it's social media or, or shows like this or whatever, but just the distrust of government, sure. all government, and the notion Donald Trump got elected to throw the, you know, drain the swamp, throw everybody out. They don't like anybody. They don't no, like I Democrats. They don't I, like Republicans. No, I think that's right. And um, I that's right. you know that's I think given Trump a unique opportunity to maybe work with both sides that hasn't materialized, but no, um, I mean the great irony of you elect a billionaire to, you know, clean. But I guess that the notion is if anybody should know you know where the money is, he should know. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. So what do you think? All right, this has been um, by any measure a a tumultuous first several months in office. It has. You know, again looking back on history, tumultuous. Where do we go from here? Where, what, what do you think Trump well, needs you know, to we do? Well, ha we have a new chief of staff. Um, so far, he seems to have exerted greater authority over people other than the president, which is not surprising. So I think, you know, I think we have a little leeway there and, so, and sort of see. But again, you know, every, t every time we think that we're in charge of affairs, something like Korea comes up. Or, you know, a disaster. Maybe a, you know, think of think of the the effect that the hurricane had during during Bush's administration. You know, something that typically government would just handle, and before you know it, it sort of escalates. And so it's you know that it's a lot easier to predict. That's why I study the past. It's a lot easier to predict <laughs> <laughs> what happened in the past than it is what's going to happen in the future. How's that? I, I would agree with that. And I would agree that, all right, these have been tumultuous times, and there has not been a great natural disaster or or real crisis or war or anything like yeah. that. Now, what what do you think about North Korea? What is What is that? Represent. You know, again, as, as I mentioned earlier, we, I mean, I mentioned uh, 1976, 1980, but of course, you know, the Cold War in large part, you know, the much of the beginning was traced to the invasion of, you know, North, uh, North Korea into, into South Korea. It's been one of these perpetual problems. Uh, we've tried diplomacy for a long time, and I, you know, I, I I'm not opposed to dip diplomacy. I think we need to be, you know, be very wise and be very prudent. But one of the problems, it, it's sort of like containment. Uh, maybe it works in the long run, but people in the meantime get frustrated. It's like, you know, but communism is still there, or you know, this is still happening. Uh, and frankly, we can't control all events. What, what we control is is our reaction to them, and you know, try you, you hope for as much wisdom and as much prudence as you can get. 
What if Trump seems upset that China is not doing more with North Korea? Well, and, and China has some responsibility here. I mean, that they have been, you know, pretty much the lone ally. I mean, there are times where Soviet Union or and Russia have, but you know, China has been a very close ally, and I I, th I think they have. I, I think they've unleashed something that was beyond what they them you know they have become tamer as as their ally has become less so. Let's go to David. Hello, David. Hey, hello. Go right ahead. Well, I kind of wanted to ask the professor what he thought about what will happen when the government goes into uh, into foreclosure in the next few months. Um, they're, they're uh, basically adjourning Congress without really, it doesn't seem like they're going to do anything to fix the deficit. The deficit or yep. the debt ceiling? What, what is he he's saying? Yeah, the, when the government the, the, goes into foreclosure, what, what is he talking about? Ba right. Basically, we get these benchmarks where if Congress does not raise the debt ceiling, all unessential government spending comes to an end. And we had and this over and over with Obama. We, we, and it we was had it, and I mean, we had it even during the Reagan administration. You know, we had it when Newt Gingrich was 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 Speaker. Um, it, it doesn't seem to accomplish much. I mean, you know, conservatives are going to continue to argue, probably correctly, that we ought to be doing something about the the deficit, and yet. You know, same people are often arguing for further tax cuts. Uh, often are arguing for greater defense expenditures. Uh, it's hard to find a government program that you can't make a good argument for. Um, we see a you know, it, the whole problem with politics is a problem. The same problem with economics. It's a problem of scarcity. We can't do everything that we want to do, but it's far easier to spend money that we don't have and sort of kick the can down the road, you know, and every, you, you see Congress, you know, once or twice a session sort of doing it with these debt, with these debt ceilings. I don't know what's going to happen. I, my, I really don't think it's to the interest of either party at this point to get to this point, you, you know, to, to have another governmental shutdown. But you know that 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 implies rational behavior, uh, <laughs> and I'm not sure that we should assume that in Washington or anywhere else for that matter. I think it's one of the reasons because because this came up over and over again. It does under I don't remember Obama. You're saying yes. it happened before, but it, it came it, up over and over again. And there were maybe two times that the government was shut down. Yeah. I felt like it, a few times the government was actually shut yes. down, and it just seems to come out of nowhere. It's not like it's the first of the year. It's right. what it's like next month right. or something. It comes right. out of nowhere. And I think it's one of the reasons people wanted to drain the swamp. They're like, let's 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 stop talking about all this and, and do something. Okay, if we're going to cut the budget, cut the budget. But let's not just shut government down in the middle right. of you know right. X month. But again, they can't agree on what to do. <laughs> right. And I so, don't know. I mean, I I just hope we can avoid that this session. But yes. We'll so see. that will be interesting. All right. So we have a minute left. Um, I asked kind of, what do you see things going? Where do you see things going? Uh, you know, how remarkable would you call the the time that we've seen thus far in the in the Trump presidency? Well, you know, it's not unparalleled. If if you think, I mean, think about a little bit different. But Harry Truman coming into office and the first decision you're having to make is, you know, do we drop an atomic bomb? Uh, John Kennedy came into office with the Bay of Pigs invasion sort of planned, and he didn't stop it. And you know, within another year or two, you had the Cuban Missile Crisis.